Hello, my name is Matthias Magdowski. I'm with the Otto von Gericke University in Magdeburg, Germany. And I would like to share some experiences that we had with an online assessment and a lecture about the fundamentals of electric engineering. I would also like to give credit to my co-author here, which is Ingo Siegert um, from the same faculty within our university. So to give you some background and some motivation, uh, we had these traditional face-to-face -face assessments since decades. So students would come to a lecture hall and would get tasks and solve these tasks uh, with the help of a pencil and paper handwritten solutions. And the only help that they got was a traditional classical calculator like this. And of course, this would not work during a pandemic uh, due to lockdowns and physical distancing and so on. So the big question for us was how does this fit together? How can we do assessments um, and exams in the pandemic and as you can see here the question is formulated uh, as an equation so uh, we are engineers we are no didacts so we, we maybe found an engineering solution um, but yeah th this is a question how, how, how does this fit together so the idea that we got was we are using a Moodle as a learning management system so why do not have tasks in this uh, Moodle system in this learning management system and we thought about um, multiple choice tasks but it's it's quite complicated to get to develop excellent questions uh, that uh, where we really need to have some understanding um, but what is also possible there is to have tasks where students have to uh, calculate something and then fit in or, or type in the result. Um, so question here, um, of course, the task for us was in German for the students, but which resistance has a lamp uh, where we have a certain um, um, where we have a certain voltage and a certain current. And for example, this is a very simple task. Students should calculate the resistance. So this is then how it looks like for the students or how it should look like. and um, when you, when you define this task, you can give the um, values of the voltage and the current here in this example as variables. So then what the Moodle will do for each student, it will come up with different values for the voltage and the current. So students cannot simply copy results from each other. Um, they would need to copy the formulas and then if every student gets different values and if every student gets the same tasks so that it's comparable from one student to the other student but the same tasks but in a different order and if students cannot arbitrarily change the order but have the tasks uh, have to do the tasks in the given order it's also quite complicated for the students if if for example if they sit together um, somewhere and and uh, do this assessment together to copy from each other and to help each other um, they said it, it, um, exams must not be bad if students help each other but in this case we wanted to have individual results and we have other exams and other types and other um, group tasks group assessments where we where we test these competencies how students would work together but this was not the idea of this assessment okay and then um, the answer formula for example here this is simply ohm's law and some conversion from this milliampere into amperes um, and then this is how you define the result in this um, learning management system. So this is what we thought, what might be a good idea, how it should work. Okay, so for the preparation, of course, you need to find and de uh, um, define suitable tasks. This can be quite complicated. Um, then, um, of course, you need sample solutions and you need to check is the solution effort for the students okay. Then we use LaTeX to write down all these tasks because we also use it for other exam tasks and other exercise tasks. Uh, convert these then later on into HTML to um, type them in or to insert them into the learning management system Moodle. Uh, write down this answer formula there that we have just seen and then generate a large list of randomized values and check if these values give you a meaningful results. Um, you have nothing where you divide by zero or something that's negative that shouldn't be negative or something like this. And then 
Um, what is, in my opinion, a very great advantage of these online assessments is that students can get direct feedback. So if they did something wrong or if they did something right, um, you can give them individualized feedback saying, oh, this was a good result. Maybe you want to read further information here or this was wrong. Think about this and that. Take a look at this page. Take a look at this video. And um, in my opinion, developing useful, meaningful feedback can be even more complicated than finding suitable tasks. Then you store the question in the catalog and you, you um, insert them into the test that you want to do with the student. And then you at first protect the test with a password and forward it to some colleagues to give you feedback on this test. So um, the feedback from the colleagues is extremely helpful. Uh, to again check what is the time effort or what time should you allow uh, the students to do these tasks. And um, again, some experience. Um, if, if you are a very experienced lecturer and let's say you take, you, you need 30 minutes to solve these tasks, then give your students three times more. This is, this is good for students. This is what we, what we found out. Um, and of course, find errors, find typos, find some possible misunderstandings, ambiguities in the wording of your questions. Then you should announce or we announced uh, this test to the students. So we did it a couple of weeks ago um, before the actual test. And then I think one or two days before the assessment, uh, we, we sent them a longer message via the Moodle system with all the details you can you can read the full text in the paper if you like um, again to make it very transparent for the students um, to have um, as very few questions later on and to avoid frustration and so on so then um, yeah the implementation the the test then was stored in the Moodle system um, it's very easy there to to say okay the test starts at this date at this time um, automatically uh, we gave the students 90 minutes to solve all the tasks in the given order and uh, the um, the test the assessment was open for two hours in total so that uh, if there was some problem with the internet connection, for example, um, that students could take a break in between and then um, continue with the test later. And one first uh, very interesting experience is that the students were very punctual, very on time. So after one minute, we had, uh, I think, about 130 students in the course. And after just one minute, more than 70 um, started to do the test. And after 10 minutes, it was something like 120. And then everything from there was, was very, very easy. Um, tests were in the Moodle. Students could all access it from their home. Um, or I think somewhere also sitting somewhere in the university, uh, but separated in, in rooms uh, due to the pandemic. Everything was locked down. And the test just ran without problems. Our servers did not crash. We were, we were very happy uh, and, and maybe, no, maybe a bit lucky. I don't know. And th there, were, there have been some, some few questions because um, students, for example, did not really understood that they need to do the tasks in the given order. So they checked through all the tasks. And then they wanted to go back to the first one to really solve it. And they found, oh, no, I cannot go back. And then they called me. I had to reset um, their, their exam. They needed to restart once again with new values. But yeah, at the end, everyone more or less successfully finished the task. So some evaluation, um, some, some small problem that we had in between or that we found out later on was that um, when defining the tasks, you need to be careful with rounding errors. So for example, here something should be calculated from these values. And um, this is, as you can see, a screenshot that the student really did uh, with his cell phone. Um, and the answer that he typed in was 0 0.38, which was said to be wrong. Um, and then the Moodle said, the, but, but the correct answer is 0 0.3, uh, 0 0.38. And, and then uh, it's somewhat confusing why this is the wrong answer. This is the right answer. And the problem is um, the student has rounded the, the result too much. We said 
to, to avoid a guessing of the result, we said the result should be exact um, in a range of plus minus 1%. And this is more than 1% of um, if you calculate the, the really exact result from the numbers here. So yeah, it's, it's a bit of a problem how this is displayed in Moodle. The result here should just have more decimal points after this to avoid this confusion. And which is maybe the most interesting result for all people that um, are still thinking about, is it okay to do these op open competence oriented, uh, open book exams, competence oriented exams? It is. Um, if you take a look at the point distribution of the final results, so this is from zero points to the full 30 points, you can see we can have an, a very nice almost Gaussian distribution with many students having something in the range from let's say 12 to 18 to 20. Um, so this is the result, the point distribution from the online assessment. And this is something from the picture that I've shown at the beginning, uh, 2019, the last face-to-face -face, um, assessment and test that we had before the pandemic. And as you can see, it almost looks more the same. Yeah? So from um, 0% to 100%, we have a peak somewhere here in the center um, and looks very comparable to what we got in this online assessment. So to summarize the main experiences and the lessons learned, um, these online assessments require a higher preparation time because you need to think about new question types and uh, really take care about the question design. But the, the effort uh, is worth because you drastically reduce the correction effort. And in, in our experience, this is worthwhile from, let's say, from about 50 to 100 students. If you have less than 50 students, it's maybe okay to have um, oral exams in groups or something like this um, to, to test, to assess students. Of course, then with multiple choice or with this um, insert a value and a unit into some uh, text field. You, you cannot test all or you cannot map all the competencies of handwritten exams because, for example, with a pen and the paper, uh, students can draw diagrams, they can draw circuit schematics, um, they can draw other schematics, they, can, they need to write down formulas. Here, at the end, you just do need to write down a numerical value. Um, you, in, in the back, of course, you need to think about the formula, but we cannot really check if the students, whatever, rearrange the formulas correctly or write down the, uh, wrote down the formulas in the correct mathematical notation. You cannot, um, or you need to inform the students about the procedure, um, make it very transparent, what will happen if, what will happen if the internet connection breaks down, what will happen if the server works down, breaks down, what will happen if you have a question, and um, uh, how, how does this all work, where, where to start the test, where to end the test, how to submit results. So what we also did was a trial assessment with the students before. I think a week before, they could all do a small test with similar tasks, um, but a little shorter and check how this all works in, in the online platform, on the Moodle platform. Um, during the test, we also provided the students with lots of opportunities to ask questions. Um, for example, during a Zoom meeting, uh, if your internet connection broke, breaks down, of course, Zoom will not work. So they could also call us or write, write us an email, which will, of course, also not work if the internet connection is down. But um, mobile phone reception works quite well in Germany. And also one lesson learned is that students do not really take great advantage of all the powerful tools that they could use in one of these open book, open web, um, take home online assessments. So they could, for example, of course, use MATLAB to do numerical calculations. They could use circuit simulators like LT Spice to simulate circuits. Um, but I think they are not really aware of all the powerful tools that they now have in their hand and still stick to the, to the classical uh, traditional calculator. So that's it. If you have further questions, uh, feel free to comment and uh, below this video and to ask questions below the video or connect with us and with me via some social media websites. And at the end, I would also show some of our references. That's it. Thank you. Bye bye.